Hello there. I wanted to share with you my experiences of using this brushing grate for the first time. Before I started this job, I looked at some videos online and I also read the instructions and I found out as much information as I could about the product. I've also learned a few other things along the way whilst using this for the first time that I thought I'd share with you. I'll be mixing bits of video from a couple of days ago when I did the job. Welcome back to the workshop. We're outside today, we're gonna to be doing a bit of jointing with this joint it simple. I've never used this stuff before, so I thought I'd give it a go. This stuff comes in three colors, but I went for the dark gray. Here's what we want to grout. We've got some concrete pavers and some porcelain slabs. There's a few videos out and about on YouTube World about this stuff. They're even put on there by the manufacturers and also professionals. So I wanted to give you a DIYer's first time using this point of view. And hopefully we'll all learn together and it may help you out if you ever go to use this sort of stuff. Let's get this area tidied up and cleaned off. By the way... If you're curious about as to what this monster is, then feel free to subscribe. This will be coming up in a future video. What I'll do, I'll put a link in the description to the manufacturer. The only reason being they got a lot of useful information on there and it's something you might be interested in. Moment of discovery. Let's see what's in the box. You get some instructions. And there's the compound. Here we go, point of no return. and get this in for a closer look hopefully you can see that it's like a hasn't really got any smell it's almost like a sandy kind of texture I tried a squeegee first like they did in the video I've kind of abandoned the squeegee because it takes off the moisture from the actual slab so it kind of dries it out so I've gone to the stiff brush I've been playing around with this and I come up with a bit of a technique there with that rubbish what I've been doing is kind of using the back of the brush there at an angle Forcing it in the joints, as it were, brushing it back, and then just going along with a tool and just press it down a little. For those of you like me who've never used this stuff before, it's not a grout, it's more of a compound. And the way I can describe it, it's uh, like a, a rubberized sort of sand that adheres to itself. I didn't encounter any staining at all, but these are porcelain tiles and they're non-porous. Coverage wise, I used 20 kilo tubs. The area for this bit of patio is seven meters by five and a half meters so that gives us about 38 square meters joint width is five mil and the depth of these slabs is 20 mil the blocks around the edge are 50 mil in depth 
I've deliberately left this out because this is part of the project I'll finish later. So for approximately 38 square meters, I've used two tubs and a bit. So that's a little over 40 kilos. So what did I learn doing this for the first time? Well, the first thing was you need to allow yourself plenty of time. I had to cover all these up with polyphene and tape to stop the product going in them. It took me absolutely ages. So using this for the first time, when you put this down, you brush it in with a stiff brush. You've really got to find an implement to push it down and then sweep more product over the top and then push it down again to really pack inside those joints. I've got you in as close as I can get you. Here's an example where I pushed it into the joints and I didn't really compact it as much as I should. And you've got that, it's a little bit softer. So that's something to be aware of. That's something I've learnt for next time. When I put the first tub down, I treated it like my first born child. You know you're really gentle and you worry about it and all the rest of it. And I was taking far too long over it. By the time I got to the second tub, I got in the swing of it and I was forcing it in the joints with the back of a brush and I just let it go on with it. I started the job in the afternoon and as it's November it got dark around 5 o'clock. I was brushing away and I couldn't see what I was doing. Inevitably I missed some bits. It's not the end of the world, I can always pack a little bit more compound in there when I do the next section. So lessons learnt. One, allow yourself plenty of time. Two, spend a bit of time forcing it in the joints as you go along. Three, be really pedantic and try not to miss bits. Four, try and make it a two-man job. It's a really hard thing to do on your own. It looks easy just getting a stiff brush and then just pushing it into the joints. But remember, you've got to get down on your knees. You've got to push that compound in with an implement. You've got to get back up again. You've got to sweep more mix in. Then you've got to go over it with a hose pipe. It takes a lot more time and a lot more effort than what you think. So depending on the area size that you've got to complete, it may be worth phoning a friend, getting around for a few hours to help you out. So what do you do with any excess product? Well, the manufacturers state that you can put it back into the tub it came from and then cover it with water. This has been in here for two days. It appears to be as fresh as when I put it in there. Obviously, this is not going to stall forever. So the sooner you can use this compound, the better. Using this product is counterintuitive because if you're using something like sand and cement, you don't want to get it too wet. But the compound is reactive to air, so it doesn't matter how wet you get it, within reason. Overall, I'd probably give myself a six or a seven out of 10, because there's some bits that could have been done a little bit better. I hope sharing my experiences of using this brushing compound has been useful to you. If so, I'll see you in the next one.